On this day, also the righteous Saint Nicholas, the Bishop of Mora, departed, or Santa Claus. He was from the city of Mora. His father's name was Epiphanius, and the name and the name of his mother was Tona. They were rich and well, God-fearing people. They had no children to bring joy in their hearts and to inherit their wealth after their death. They remained without a son until they grew old and were en enveloped with despair. God had pity on them and gave them the saint. He was filled with the divine grace since a young age. When he reached the school age, he demonstrated through intelligence and knowledge that he learned far more from the Holy Spirit than he did from his teachers. He learned all the doctrine and teachings of the church since a young age and was ordained a deacon. Then he became a monk in a monastery when his cousin was the abbot. He lived an ascetic and righteous life and was ordained a priest when he was 19 years old. <coughs> God gave him the gift to work signs and wonders and to heal the sick. St. Nicholas is too illustrious to describe all the signs that were performed by his hands, but an example of his good deeds and benevolent work follows. There was a very rich man in the city of Mora who lost all his wealth. He had three daughters who had passed the age of marriage, and he could not marry them because of his poverty. Satan tempted the man to think that he should make his daughters live in sin, so they might get their food by means of fornication. God revealed to St. Nicholas the thoughts which were in this man's head and what he intended to do. St. Nicholas took a hundred dinars of his father's money and tied it in a sack. During the night secretly and without anyone seeing him, he threw the money into the window of that poor man's house. That's why you see in Santa Claus with the big bag. It's because he carried this money into the house in the middle of the night and threw it in the window without anyone seeing when the man found the gold, he was astonished and rejoiced exceedingly and was able to give his eldest daughter away in marriage. During another night, the saint threw another hundred dinars into the man's house and the man was able to give his second daughter away in marriage. The man wanted to know <coughs> who this charitable person was. The third time when the saint threw the gold into the house, the man was watching and immediately when he felt the drop of the sack, he ran out of his house to see who was throwing the gold to him. He found the kind bishop. Saint Nicholas and the man bowed down at his feet and paid him great homage and thanked him because he saved his daughters from poverty and from a life of sin. The saint refused to accept any thanks and asked him to thank the Lord who put this thought in his heart. Saint Nicholas drove out the devil and his angels from people. He healed many sick and he blessed little bread to satisfy many people with much more leftover. Before being selected the bishop, he saw in a vision a great throne and magnificent vestments placed on it. And a man said to him, put on these vestments and sit on this throne. <coughs> Another night he saw Our Lady, the Holy Virgin St. Mary, giving him the vestments of the priesthood, and Our Lord Jesus Christ giving him the gospel. When the Bishop of Mora departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to the Archbishop and told him the one who was chosen for this rank was Nicholas, and described his virtues to him. When he awoke, he told the bishops what he had seen, and they all believed in the vision. They knew that it was from the Lord Jesus Christ. They took St. Nicholas and made him a bishop over the city of Mora. Shortly thereafter, Diocletian reigned and incited the pagan worship. When Diocletian arrested many of the believers, he heard about the saint. He seized him, tortured him severely for many years. The Lord strengthened him, protected him, and raised him whole from all these tortures, so that he might become a mighty branch of the tree of faith. When Diocletian was tired of torturing him, he cast him into prison. <coughs> saint Nicholas wrote to his congregation from prison to teach, encourage, and confirm them in the faith. He remained in prison until God perished Diocletian and established the reign of Constantine the Just. Constantine brought out all the confessors from prison. Among them was St. Nicholas who returned to his city. The confessors are the ones in faith who suffer for their faith. Uh, and, and this is how they confess their faith, not confess their sins, but they confess the faith in Christ by suffering for his name. As opposed to the martyrs who die um, uh, so not only do they suffer, but they, they die for their faith. When the Council of Nicaea convened in the year 325 AD to judge Arius, he was one of the 318 fathers assembled there. Having finished his course and guarded his flock, he departed to be with the Lord. He sat on the Episcopal throne for more than 40 years, and all the days of his life were about 80 years. May his prayers be with us, and glory be to our God forever. Amen.